when a couple decide to start getting ready to have children, we're going to look and see you know, what that uh, woman's uh, health is like. But at the same time, we completely ignore the health or the lifestyle choices of the father. And so what my research is really trying to get at is how dad's drinking has these long-term implications in the development of fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. People have known, based on case histories, uh, that fathers that consumed a lot of alcohol uh, were likely to have offspring that were disabled in uh, some ways. It's very recent that people started understanding that sperm had this programming of their DNA that could be transmitted from parent to the offspring. We use different biomedical models of preconception male exposure used to examine what the long-term consequences are, questions in trying to get at the mechanism of how it is that these memories persist. The data that we've produced so far indicates that male drinking causes growth restriction in the offspring, and the offspring start to develop problems later in life. Alcohol uh, effects during uh, development are brain-based disabilities, intellectual function, uh, executive function, ability to make decisions, but alcohol also affects the cardiovascular system, the skeletal system, there are endocrine effects, there are gastrointestinal effects, so this is a multi-system effect. If you look at the breadth of research looking at um, alcohol exposures, they are focused on maternal models of exposure. There is zero consideration almost given to paternal exposures prior to conception. Well, I went to the, to the Keck Foundation and I said, look, what I'm doing here is definitely on the forefront of science. It's high risk, high reward, and it absolutely questions the paradigm. It's difficult to change behaviors if you stigmatize people. Both males and females ought to be equally invested in, in the process of having a healthy pregnancy. And that may mean changing male behavior as well as female.